بسم الله الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم أما بعد السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته ما شاء الله ما شاء الله dear brothers and sisters dear parents dear students ما شاء الله such a great pleasure for me to be here right now and alhamdulillah I welcome all of you ma sha Allah to this wonderful graduation ceremony and sometimes I feel like speechless I don't know what even to say when I see ma sha Allah a sea of youngsters a sea of parents as well alhamdulillah it's such a wonderful thing to see and inshallah ta'ala I just want to remind myself and you all of you inshallah ta'ala one hadith where the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam has said خَيْرُكُمْ مَنْ تَعَلَّمَ الْقُرْآنَ وَعَلَّمَهُ The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam has said the best among you are those who learn the Quran and those who teach MashaAllah all of you who are here today parents, teachers, students we are going to be part of this hadith because the ulama they have said the parents are included in the hadith because the parents they are the ones who are motivating the youngsters to come to the masajid to come to the madrasas and to the to the ma'ahid and the teachers are the ones who are teaching the students are the ones who are learning all of us were included inshallah ta'ala so i know we haven't got much time inshallah ta'ala i just want to encourage all of you inshallah ta'ala as parents as students as teachers inshallah ta'ala to keep up the good work that you're doing and inshallah ta'ala allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will reward you greatly and i don't want to take much of your time and hopefully if there's another opportunity for me to talk inshallah ta'ala i'll come and talk jazakumullah khairan wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh ولقد آتينا لقمان الحكمة أن اشكر لله ومن يشكو فإنما يشكو لنفسه ومن كفر فإن الله غني حميد وإذ قال لقمان لبنه وهو يعظه يا بني لا تشرك بالله إن الشرك لظلم عظيم ووصينا الإنسان بوالديه حملته أمه وهنا على وهن وفصاله في عامين وفصاله في عامين أنشكو لي ولوالديك إلي المصير اسمي خديجة نحن تلاميذ روم فايف اليوم سنتحدث عن الألوان ألوان 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 نحن نحن الألوان في لوننا الزاهي ألوان 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 نحن نحن الألوان في لوننا الزاهي أنا اللون الأحمر أنا اللون الأخضر أنا اللون الأصفر أنا اللون الأزرق سبحان الله ما أجمل الألوان بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم والصلاة والسلام على نبينا محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم. My dear brothers and sisters, I would like to introduce myself and my friends. I am Nadia. This is Ramla. She's Sophia. That's Nasma. He's Abdurrahman. Today we would like to spell out Surah Al-Fatiha. بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم همزة فدح لام سكون أل ح فدح ميم سكون حم أل حم دال دم تو أل حمد لام كش لام شاد لل أل حمد لل لام فدح ل الحمد لله كشري الحمد لله رافد حباشد رب باكسر لا تكون بالرب 
عين فدحة ألي سخيرة ع رب العالم فدحة ل رب العالم ميم كشوية سكون مي رب العالم نون فدحة ل رب العالم فدح راشد آر را فدح حاسكون راح آر راح مين فدح ألف صغيرة ما آر راح ما مون كسر راشنير آر راح ما نير را فدح را آر راح ما نير را حاك شوية سكوحي الرحمن الرحي السلام عليكم I am Ahmed This is Umar This is Muhammad Salim And today we will be doing 10 of the 200 golden hadiths Inshallah Muhammad Salim will start first إنما الأعمال بالنياء وإنما لكل امرئ ما نوى Actions are bought by intentions and each one will get but that which he intended إن الله لا ينظر إلى سوركم وأموالكم ولكن ينظر إلى قلوبكم وأعمالكم Verily Allah does not look at your outward form and wealth Rather he looks at your hearts and deeds يا أيها الناس توبوا إلى الله فإني أتوب إلى الله في يوم مئة مرة Oh people repent to Allah for I repent to Allah on her return today Now I'll be doing the next three إن الله يقبل توبة عبده ما لم يغرر Verily Allah accepts the repentance of a slave so long as the death rattle has not signed in his throat من كان يؤمن بالله واليوم الآخر فل Whoever believes in Allah and the last day, and the last day, let him speak good or keep silent. In the masabu, in the sadamat alula, true patience is when calamity first strikes. And I will be doing the last four. عجب لأمر المؤمن إن أمره كله له خير وليس ذلك لأحد إلا للمؤمن إن أصابته سراء شكر فكان خيرا له وإن أصابته ضراء صبر فكان خيرا له. How wonderful is the affair of the believer, for all his affairs are good. And that does not apply to anyone except the believer. If something good happens to him, he thanks for it, and that's good for him. And if something bad happens to him, he bears it with patience, and that's good for him. ليس الشديد بالسرعة إنما الشديد الذي يملك نفسه عند الغضب. The strong man is the one is not the one who overpowers people in wrestling. Rather, the strong man is the one who controls himself when he gets angry. قال رجل النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم أوصني قال لا تغضب فرد دميرارا قال لا تغضب A man came to the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم and said Advise me The Prophet said Do not become angry The man repeated his request several times and each time the Prophet said Do not become angry دع ما يريبك إلى ما لا يريبك فإن الصدق طمأنينة وإن الكذب ريبة Leave that which makes doubt for that which does not make you doubt Truthfulness brings tranquility while lying so stout. Thank you for listening. My name is Amir, and today, inshallah, I would like to give a quick reminder about time. Time is very crucial and it goes very quick. This life is very little compared to the hereafter. We only get around 80 to 90 years in this life, and a lot of people tend to waste their time. There's a hadith that Ibn Abbas reported, the messenger, peace and blessings upon him, said, Take advantage of five things before you lose your youth, before your old age, your wealth before your poverty, your health before your illness, your free time before your work, and your life before you die. This hadith shows when you are young, you should start seek knowledge early before you get old and not waste any time. The hadith also shows nobody can guarantee what tomorrow brings. Our health is a blessing from Allah that we tend to take for granted. Also, the hadith shows you shouldn't spend your money on haram stuff. The hadith also shows everyone should take advantage when we have free time. These days, we see the youth on the road and try, try to imitate the gangsters. And we, um, to avoid this, we need to see the youth in the mosque and see them learn the Quran and hadith and pray all five salahs and stay connected with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The last thing I want to talk about 
is to take advantage of, a, of your life before you die. Every night before we go to sleep, we enter a state where our soul leaves our body, and when we wake up, it's only because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has retested, has, when we wake up, it's only because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has blessed us by returning our souls. Nobody is promised this life, and this is why we should spend our time wisely. Inshallah, I'm going to stop here, and jazakum wa khairan. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. بسم الله والصلاة والسلام على نبينا محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم. I would like to introduce myself and my friends. This is Hamzan Abdulrahman. Today we we will be giving a short amount on how one put trust in Allah. Allah says in the Quran, Tul Tatulah, page sixty-five, ayat three. ومن يتوكل على الله فهو حسب and whoever relies upon Allah, then Allah is sufficient for him. When I say the word trust, what comes to your mind? Did you realize that every day you trust in a lot of different things? When you get ready to eat breakfast, you open the fridge and trust that your mom or dad has food in there for you, otherwise you would starve. When you get in the car to go to school, you trust that the car won't fall apart down the road. When you're a doctor at school, you trust that your mom or dad will pick you up when school is over. So let me ask you other questions. Why do you trust your parents? When you are sick, he tends to help. You cherish to love your parents, so you don't you not. Yeah, you also love them. They protect you and love you and meet all your needs. You trust them. If you catch any difficulty, you know they are always there to help you. Have you ever thought how much you love Allah and trust Him? Allah meets all the needs of all the beings He creates. Thanks to Him with infinite mercy. Do you know that the one who puts his full trust in Allah will never be let down? We live in this world in peace and enjoy countless blessings. Allah, the creator of the universe, knows every little detail about us. So we trust him with anything and everything. Assalamu alaikum. We hope you benefit from this. Assalamu alaikum wa wa barakatuh. I am Samaya, this is Esau, this is Sophia, and this is Fatima. I hope you are all in the best of health and Iman. Today we will be reading you a specific hadith. عن أبي العباس عبد الله بن عباس رضي الله عنهما قال كنت خلف النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم يوما فقال يا غلام إني أعلمك كلمات احفظ الله يحفظك احفظ الله تجده تجاهك إذا سألت فاسأل الله وإذا استعنت فاستعن بالله واعلم أن الأمة لو اجتمعت على أن ينفعوك بشيء لم ينفعوك إلا بشيء قد كتبه الله لك وأن اجتموا على أن يدروك بشيء شيء لم يضروك إلا بشيء قد كتبه الله عليك رفعت الأقلام وجفت السحف رواه الترمذي وقال حديث حسن صحيح On the authority of Abi al-Abbas, Abdullah ibn al-Abbas رضي الله عنهما who once said, I was riding behind the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم's back and he said to me, O oh young man, I shall teach you some words. Be mindful of Allah and he'll protect you. Be mindful of Allah and you'll find him in front of you. If you ask, ask Allah. If you seek help, seek help from Allah. I'm going to be reading a poem called Death Will Come. Its darkness and wrath will arrive on your door without a single sound. It'll haunt you in the night and day until you answer its call. One, two, three times before you gradually start to fall. The money, fame, fortune, luxury will become nothing in Allah's eyes but lame. Because once you're trapped in all this pleasure, it will be hard to end the game. Death will come for certain, I'm sure, so you're either prepared or thrown off board. It was early in the morning at four when death knocked on my bedroom door. Who is there? The sleeping one cried. I'm Jibreel, let me inside. The man started to shiver as one sweating in deadly fever. He shouted to his sleeping wife, don't let him take away my life. Oh people, take morrow from here. You never know, your end may be near. Change your living and make amends for heaven on your deeds depends. Death happens at any time. The fortune and fame will help the afterlife. Your deeds will. This is seen in the hadith. In Allah, la yanzuru ila sawarikum wa amwalikum, walakin yanzuru ila qulubikum wa amwalikum. Verily, Allah does not look at outward form or wealth; rather, He looks at your hearts. Jazakum Allahu khair. My name is Abdul Rahman. This is Abdul Salam. Amin. Fatima. Huria. Fatha. Amira. 
Fatima and Zahra. Today we'll be doing two nasheeds. The first one's called the days of the, um, the months of the year, and the second one's called the days of the week. Muharram Safar Rabi al Awal Rabi al Thani. These are the months in Islam. Jamad al Ula, Jamad al Ukhra, Rajab and Shaban. Ramadan, Ramadan, Ramadan and Shawwal. Dul Qada and Dul Hijjah. These are the months in Islam. Muharram Safar Rabi al Awal Rabi al Thani. These are the months in Islam. Jumad al Ula, Jumad al Ukhra, Rajab and Shaban. Ramadan, Ramadan, Ramadan and Shawwal. Dul Qada and Dul Hijjah. These are the months in Islam. Now we'll be doing the days of the week. Seba, Seba, Iya Seba. أيام الأسبوع سبعة 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 هي سبعة أيام الأسبوع سبعة السبت الأحد والاثنين السبت الأحد والاثنين الثلاثاء والأربعاء الخميس والجمعة سبعة سبعة هي سبعة أيام الأسبوع سبعة 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 هي سبعة أيام الأسبوع سبعة السبت الأحد والاثنين السبت الأحد والاثنين الثلاثاء والأربعاء الخميس والجمعة. They will be lecturing you on the importance of reciting the Quran. The Quran is the fifth and the last sacred book of Allah, the Almighty. It was revealed to us by our beloved Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. One of the many lessons that the Quran teaches to worry about ourselves more than others as we will be tested and judged individually. Everyone is responsible for their own accountabilities. One of the many signs of Yawm al-Qiyamah is the Quran vanishing. Therefore, those who, those who have recited the Quran off by heart will be blessed on those days. Allah loves those who constantly recite the Quran as they gain many benefits from it. The divine, of, the divine book of Allah which returns towards as it has all the solutions to all of our problems. Re recite, the Quran for, recite the Quran whether it be one ayah or one juz. You will gain many benefits from it. No matter what age, what state, what wealth you are in, the, the Quran will help you regardless. Qala Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam the messenger of Allah, blessings be upon him and his family, has said, the best amongst you is those who learn the Quran and then teach it to others. Those who read the Quran open the greatest door of goodness, and those who learn it should do so for the sake of Allah and not for the praise and approval of others. He should be keen and ready to teach it to his brothers, for surely those who gain the most in the day of judgment are those who dedicate their time and their, themselves um, to the ummah. قال رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم قارئ القرآن واستمع إليه في الأجر والسواء. The Messenger of Allah peace be upon him said, the one who recites the Quran and the one who listens to it have an equal share in the reward. Reciting to the Quran and listening to it with reflection are both considered one of the best acts of worship. When distinguishing between acts of worship, if there's no evidence to accord one act of worship priority over another, we must be silent about the matter and direct every worship to do what Allah told us to. In this case, reciting and listening are both equally rewarded. Even though in some cases recitation is preferable, we should, a Muslim should vary his efforts and do what he believes in his heart to be humble. I hope he benefited from this. My name is Edna. I'm from room two. This is Juwari and this is Faima. Today we are going to be reading two hadiths from the book 200 Golden Hadiths. Me and Fatima are going to be reading the Arabic and the translation and Juwari is going to be doing the meaning. نعمتان مقبول فيها كثير من الناس والصحة والفرق. There are many blessings which many people do not make the most out of and yet lose out. Good health and free time. In this hadith, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is warning us of Jahannam. He is telling us how much we should fear the hellfire and that there is nothing worse than the punishment of Allah. اتقوا النار ولو بشق ولو بشق التمر 
protect yourself from the fire even if it's half a date. Jazakallah khairan for listening. My name is Ayan and today I'll be doing a poem about purpose of life. What are we doing here and where are we going to go? It's like one morning we wake up and then it's welcome to the show. Don't ask any questions, just go with the flow. Make as much money as you can and try your best not to get broke. Copy everything you see on the TV shows from hairstyles to the clothes and don't think too often. Just do exactly as you're told. And if you ever get confused, just turn towards the alcohol. Still hear thoughts, just turn on the radio. But in all honesty, I just need to know, is there more to the cycle than living and dying? Leaving a happy home and a whole lot of property that someone else is going to own. And no, he did not ever leave us alone. Just like every master, he left us with commandments. The Quran, which was sent to a man who could not read or write over 1400 years ago. So we take God as a mockery and his angels as jokes. We live, the, we live, this, life to we live this life to follow our desires and hopes. Thinking that this life is our only home. No, we will simply die in we will simply die and turn into bones. Correction after correction. After the grass dies, the rain arrives and it re after the grass dies, the rain arrives and it regrows. And Allah promises to do the same to us. Brings us back from our very fingertips to our toes. You yourself thought you, you yourself were sufficient for your own accountability, so don't be mad at me. You thought you wouldn't come back to me. I gave you a whole life long to search after me, but you was busy in all that which was temporary. And glad tidings for those who believe, and if you disbelieve, read. And don't let this day be the day you find out what your life really means. Read. Assalamu alaikum. Okay, next we have a lecture by Fatima Hassan. Some of us will know about the Sahabi Jalil and that he had an axe in his hand. And when he was going down to strike, to chop the wood, he heard Allahu Akbar. Now what did he do? And that is what we were going to learn today, inshallah. You cannot walk out of this place the same way that you walked in, akhin ukhti. You have to change. Ilm al-amal, knowledge and action that we preach at Mercy Mission. Knowledge and action. You learn something, you act upon it. It becomes hijja lakal alayk. It becomes a plea for you, not against you. So that Sahaba, may Allah be pleased with him, as soon as he had the strike onwards down, he let go. From now on, when you hear Allahu Akbar, Akhi and Ukhti, you let go of whatever there is that you have in your hand. Because if you don't, فَإِنَّ تَكُولُ بِاللِّسَانِ اللَّهُ لَيْسَ أَكْبَرُ Because if you don't, you're actually saying with your deeds and your actions and your behavior that Allah is not greater, that movie is greater, that football match is, made, is greater. Could you imagine? Subhanallah. So he said, the Sahabi said, لا بورك في تركة نودي عليه الصلاة That strike is not blessed. From now on, when you hear Allah Akbar and you're doing something else, who is greater than Allah? What is more important than Allah? Where do, where do you stand with Allah? In aratta an tarifu ma kam fandar fi ma akram. Where does Allah stand with you? Does He come first, or when I have time, or does He come manyara? I'm busy. From now on, when you hear Allah Akbar, nothing is greater than Allah. So He said, How do you attain khushu? It is when you say Allahu Akbar and you mean it. And if you listen to the adhan, it will give you the answer. The only thing repeated four times is Allahu Akbar. It's telling you Allahu Akbar. Allah is greater than whom? Than your boss, than your job, than your health, than your wealth, than your children, than your spouse, than anything else. Allahu Akbar. Repeat it four times. And if you don't tear it, listen to what's coming after. Ashhadu an la ilaha illallah. I bear witness that there is no deity but Allah. Do you really testify? and declare that there is no God worthy to be worshipped except Allah, no deity deserving to be worshipped except Allah. So why are you worshipping the dollars and the pounds? Why are you worshipping your teachers and your bosses instead of worshipping Allah? Who has the keys to heaven and hell? Who means more to you? Who will you need more? Who will come in your aid? Who is in control of your destiny? You want to run away so fast that you've forgotten that you want to run away so fast from the prayer so you can get the job or get the provision or get whatever it is that you need to get. And you've forgotten that the one you're running away from is the one who can get you the job or get you the provision. So how can you run away from someone who is actually in charge of your own worldly affairs? 
So be smart, brothers and sisters. From now on, when you say Allahu Akbar, you mean it. You leave those worldly affairs like you leave your shoes outside the masjid. Outside, that's where the life and your worldly affairs belong. Dunya, meaning the lower level. And if you don't hear Allahu Akbar or Ashhadu an la ilaha illallah, you'll hear wa ashhadu anna Muhammad rasulullah. Is this the Ummah of Rasulullah? Is it? Is this the Ummah of the Messenger of Allah? Could it be possible that you actually declared that Muhammad is my messenger and you're actually staying away from his sunnah? Subhanallah. How could that be possible? If you haven't even heard, he tells you straight, bluntly, Hayya ala salah, come to the prayer. If nothing is working, if you cannot read between the lines, there is a caller calling you, come, come to the prayer. If it's not working and you want another success, Hayya ala al-fala, come to the true success. In this life and the hereafter, he reminds us once more before it's all over. Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar, La ilaha illallah. So from now on, Akhi and Ukhti, when you say Allahu Akbar, mean it. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. My name is Muhammad, this is, this is Jabril, this is Abdullah, and that is Anas. And inshallah, today we'll be talking about who Allah is. Who is Allah? Allah is the supreme lord of the universe and beyond, including everything in it. He is Al Khaliq, the creator. He is the one and only true God worthy of our worship. He created everything in six days and he sent many prophets down, such as Muhammad, Nuh, Ibrahim, and many more who called people to worship Allah alone, rejecting idolatry and polytheism. The word Islam means submission, was not at first the name of a religion founded by Muhammad. It referred rather to the original religion of all mankind and the universe itself, which like us is created to serve Allah. Some prophets received scriptures from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, notably the Torah, Zabur and Injil. These books, however, became corrupted or lost. Miraculously, the Quran revealed to Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, the very word of Allah will not suffer the same fate. The Quran refers to Allah, Lord of the worlds, and he has 99 names. These include the King, the Almighty, and the All-Seeing. Two important titles of Allah occur in a special phrase. Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim, the most compassionate, the most merciful. Now I will pass it on to Jibril. Now I'll be reading the greatest ayah from the Quran. And this ayah talks about Allah. أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم الله لا إله إلا هو الحي القيوم لا تأخذه سنة ولا نوم له ما في السماوات وما في الأرض من ذا الذي يشفع عنده إلا بإذنه يعلم ما بين أيديهم وما خلفهم ولا يحيطون بشيء من علمه إلا بما شاء وسع كرسيه السماوات والأرض ولا يؤده حفظهما وهو العلي العظيم الله there's no deity except him the ever-living, the sustainer of all existence. Neither drowsiness overtakes him nor sleep. To him belongs whatever's in the heavens and whatever's on the earth. Who is it that can intercede except by his permission? He knows what is before them and what will be after them. And they encompass not a thing of his knowledge except for what he wills. His kursi extends over the heavens and the earth and their preservation ties him not. And he's the most high and the most great. Now I will be doing the three, be the three main benefits of Ayatul Kursi. Number one, the one who recites Ayatul Kursi every morning will be in the protection and the safety of Allah. Number two, Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, if one recites Ayatul Kursi before going to sleep, Allah will send an angel to come and look after him or her. Number three, the Prophet 
When someone is alone at their house and the recitation of Ayat al Kursi will make him or her remain calm and should not fear. Jazakumullahu khayrun for listening. إن الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعود بالله من شرور أنفسنا وسيئات أعمالنا من يهد الله فلا مضل له ومن يضل فلا هادي له وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمد رسول الله Verily, all praise to Allah. We seek His aid and ask for His forgiveness. We seek refuge from Allah from the evil of ourselves and our evil actions. Whomever Allah grants their doom can guide him, and whoever Allah misguides their doom can guide them. I bear witness that no one has the right to be worshipped except Allah, and I bear witness that Muhammad is the slave and messenger. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. I hope everyone is in the best of health and iman. We are from in four weekdays and today we'll briefly tell you about the three important questions of Islam. These are the three questions that every Muslim should learn and know about. Now we'll introduce the third questions. What are the three fundamental principles that every mankind has to know? فقول say معرفة العبد ربه. The servant must know his Lord. ودينه. His religion. ونبيه المحمد صلى الله عليه وسلم. And his prophet Muhammad صلى الله عليه وسلم. These are the three questions we were asked about when we enter our grave. Question one being who is the Lord. Question two being what is the religion. And question three being who is the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Now we introduce the first question which is knowing your Lord. So if it is said to you, who is your Lord? Then say, Rabbi Allah alladhi rabbani. By the way, Allah is my Lord, the one who nurtured me. وَرَبَّ جَمِيعَ الْعَالَمِينَ And nurtured all creations بِنِعْمِهِ Through his favors وَهُوَ مَعَبُودِي And he is whom I worship لَيْسَ لِي مَعَبُودٍ سِوَى That don't equal to him whom I worship وَالدَّلِيلُ قَوْلُهُ تَعَالَى The proof of this is in Allah's statement الْحَمْدُ لِلَّهِ رَبِّ الْعَالَمِينَ All praise be to Allah, Lord of all of creation Now we introduce how we know that Allah exists فَإِذَا قِيلَ لَكْ so if it said to you, بما عرفت ربك. How did you come to know your Lord? فقل. Then say, بآياته مخلوقاته. By the way of His signs and creations. ومن آياته الليل والنهار والشمس والقمر. And His signs are the night and the day and the sun and the moon. ومن مخلوقاته السماوات الصبع. And the seven levels of heaven. والأرضون الصبع. And the seven levels of earth. ومن فيهن وما بينهما. Whoever and whatever lies in between them. Look His signs are the night and the day and the sun and the moon. We do not push it to the sun or the moon, but rather push it to Allah, the one who creates all of creation, if it is he who you truly worship. Now I'll introduce the second question, which is knowing your religion. وَهُوَ الْإِسْتِسْلَامُ لِلَّهِ بِالتَّوْحِيدِ Submit to Allah with Tawheed وَالْإِنْقِيَادُ لَهُ بِالطَّاعَةِ Stay away from shirk and its people وَالْبَرَاءَةُ مِنَ الشِّرْكِ وَأَهْلِهِ Stay away from shirk and its people. Now we'll introduce the third and final question, which is knowing your Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam. He is. وَهُوَ مَحَمَدٌ إِبْنُ عَبْدُ اللَّهِ إِبْنُ عَبْدُ الْمُطَالِبِ إِبْنُ هَاشِمٍ. He is Muhammad the son of Abdullah the son of Abdul Muttalib the son of Hashim. وَهَاشِمٌ مِنَ الْقُرَيْشِ. Hashim is from the tribe of Quraysh. وَمِنْ قُرَيْشٍ مِنَ الْعَرَبِ. And he is from the Arabs. عرب من دنيا تي إسماعيل ابن إبراهيم الخليل. and Quraysh is from the children of Prophet Ismail and son of Prophet Ibrahim. عليه وعلى نبينا أفضل الصلاة والسلام. may Allah send peace and blessing to our Prophet Muhammad صلى الله عليه وسلم. Prophet Muhammad صلى الله عليه وسلم lived for sixty-three years, forty of which was before he became prophet. He was a prophet and messenger for twenty. 
23 years. He became prophet by Allah saying, Iqra, which means read. He became messenger by Allah saying, Ya ayyuhal muddathir. The Prophet sallallahu home land was Mecca. He laid to our greatest Medina. Allah sent him to warn the people against shirk and to call to Tawheed. Subhanakallahumma wa bihamdika. Ashhadu an la ilaha illa ant. Nastaghfiruka wa atubu ilayk. Jazakumullah khair for listening. My name is Zainab and I am six years old. Today I will be doing the seven conditions of Shahada. Mail. We need to know as Muslims, what does La ilaha illallah mean? When we say there is none worthy of worship and truth except Allah, what does this mean? Who do we need to have knowledge of? The answer is Allah. Just like we slowly get to know our friend and enjoy their friendship, get to know about Allah, learn about Allah, and inshallah your love will grow for him. Today I will be doing the seven conditions of Shahada. May Allah bless you all with the beneficial knowledge. Ameen. The first con the first condition is al ilm which is knowledge and negates ignorance. The second condition is al yaqeen which is certainty and negates doubt. The third condition is al ikhlas which is sincerity and negates showing off and joining partners with Allah. The fourth condition is truthfulness, which is the first. The fourth condition is asidq which is truthfulness and negates untruthfulness. The, the fifth is al-mahabba, which is love and negates hate. The sixth is al-inqiyad, which is compliance and negates refusing. The seventh and final condition is al is al-qubul, which is acceptance and negates reject. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. I'm going to keep it very brief because I know everyone's been sat down for a long time. Um, my name is Ma'alim Yusuf and I started teaching Room 4 a few months ago. And since I started teaching them, they've been making a lot of progress. And this presentation is just showing us the amount of progress they've made and the things they've, they've achieved since being in Room 4. So listen carefully and watch, inshallah. When we wake up in the morning, when we wake up, we thank Allah for everything we have. Oh, we start the day by praying. Oh, praying for those who may not have what we have. Every day's another day where we get to smile and play. Blessings upon blessings from Him, Allah. Assalamu. Alaikum, alaikum salam. May peace be upon you, upon you be peace. Oh, 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 So alhamdulillah, on Wednesday the 10th of July, we completed reading Juz Amma together as a class. And one of the students by the name of Luqman, completed memorizing Juz Amma. Say MashaAllah. So as you can see, they have achieved a lot and they are doing very well as a class. We interviewed a few of the students and we asked them about the class and this is what they've said. Learning about the prophets and prophets' uncles and prophets' wives. Adu Sakida Abib Sakida. And we have been learning about the 99 names of Allah. We finished Juz Amma. We finished Nuraniya. Uh, playing, playing outside, outside football. the football. The Baalims. Helping students. We had a, a party when we, when we finished half of the Juz. And we did the same when we finished Nuraniya. This is another question we asked them. This is the last question we asked them, and can I just ask the media to dim the lights for this, please? Jazakumullahu khair for listening. Um, I ask you all to make dua for the class and for the rest of the students as they've been working very hard throughout the year. Jazakumullahu khair. And to finalize the student awards, 
we have uh, chosen, alhamdulillah, uh, two students from the whole madrasa and to give them special awards. So two students from the whole madrasa. Uh, I will call these two students. Uh, we have got student of the year. That certificate we give them, inshallah. We will call Aisha Abdurazak. Aisha Abdurazak. And also we will call Amir Muhammad. Takbir. So inshallah, these are the, the student awards. I uh, would like uh, to say thank you to the teachers uh, who have been giving uh, uh, much time and effort to, to the kids. Uh, Alhamdulillah, they have done a great job. So we'll say thank you to them. I've got many other teachers who are not in today. But inshallah, and uh, on behalf of them, on behalf of them, I, will, uh, I would like to thank all the parents and all the children and for attending this event uh, and now okay bismillah assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh okay jazakumullah khair i just want to say to the idara and to the management of our mosque to the management of our ma'had jazakumullah khairan to our volunteers to our youngsters to our parents to our students jazakumullah khair for the hard work that they put in and the performances that of today was like absolutely fantastic. It blew me away. And I've not seen anything like this, mashallah. It gave me a lot of comfort, mashallah, to the heart. And be in the light, ta'ala, I congratulate you all of you, inshallah, ta'ala, barakallahu fikum. And I want to say to the teachers, jazahumullah khairan, for all the effort, mashallah, jazahumullah khairan. And we have seen the products, mashallah. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa